In early May of 2021, an army of red-eyed creatures, trillion strong, crawled out from their underground lairs and took to the skies, descending upon the eastern United States in an enormous screaming plague. But this was not some strange winged zombie apocalypse that you somehow missed, but rather an emergence of the periodical cicadas. These large insects emerge en masse every 13 or 17 years, and while they are harmless to humans, their sheer numbers can still wreak havoc, coating streets and buildings, damaging trees, clogging waterways, and filling the air with their deafening buzzsaw song. On June the 8th, the chartered plane that was to carry US President Joe Biden on his first overseas trip was even disabled when cicadas clogged the auxiliary power unit. Then, after only three months, the trillions of insects were all gone, not to be seen again for another 17 years. This phenomenon has puzzled biologists for decades, prompting questions like, why do cicadas spend more than 99% of their lives underground? What is the significance of the numbers 13 and 17? And why do only a handful of species exhibit this strange extended life cycle? While no definitive explanation has yet been found the answer, strangely, may lie in the realm of mathematics. Cicadas belong to the family Cicadidae, which includes more than 3,000 species found on every continent except Antarctica. Though often referred to as locusts, this is a misnomer, for while locusts belong to the order Orthoptera, cicadas belong to the order Hemiptera, or true bugs. As such, cicadas have tube-like mouthparts, which they use to suck the sap from plants, and unlike locusts, pose no threat to human crops. The vast majority of cicadas are annual species, with life cycles ranging from between two to eight years. As the life cycles of different populations are variable and overlap extensively, a certain number of annual cicadas will always emerge every year, hence their name. These are the cicadas most people are familiar with, their high-pitched whining songs applying the dog days of summer with their distinctive soundtrack. But one genus, Magisicida, plays by very different rules. Found only in the eastern United States, these species, known as periodical cicadas, have unusually long life cycles, spending more than a decade underground before emerging en masse in tremendous numbers. Of the seven known species, four emerge every 13 years and three every 17 years. The 17-year species are generally northern in distribution, while the 13-year species are found mainly in the south and midwest. The life cycle of a periodical cicada begins when a female lays a brood of eggs in a slit cut in the bark of a tree. After six to eight weeks, the eggs hatch and the immature cicadas or nymphs climb down the tree and go underground, burrowing up to two feet into the earth. Here they will spend 99.5% of their lifespans sucking sap from plant roots. During this extended adolescence, the nymphs will pass through five developmental or instar stages, molting their exoskeletons as they grow. Finally, after 13 or 17 years, depending on the species, the nymphs are ready to emerge. This typically occurs during a three-month period spanning April to June. In anticipation, many cicadas build short mud turrets extending above the surface, though the precise function of these is unknown. The cicadas will not emerge, however, until the soil temperature is just right, 17.9 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit, at a soil depth of 20 centimeters or 8 inches. These emergences usually take place at dusk, granting the flightless nymphs some protection from daytime predators as they emerge from the ground and climb to the relative safety of tree trunks, telephone poles, fence posts, or nearly any vertical surface they can find. Here, they shed their exoskeletons one last time, completing the final stage of their transformation. These mature or imago cicadas then spend up to six days in the trees to allow their wings to expand to their full length and their their soft exoskeleton to harden. Then it's time for the cicadas to fulfill their sole purpose in life, finding a mate. Male cicadas sing to attract females using a special organ on their abdomen called a timbal. Each species produces its own distinctive song ranging from a gentle chirp to a harsh buzz resembling a chainsaw. In some cases, cicada song can reach a deafening 106 decibels as loud as a commercial airliner flying low overhead. Receptive females respond to a male's song with a distinctive visual wing flick which allows individuals to communicate amid the din of millions of cicadas singing at once. Once a pair have mated, the female goes off to lay her eggs and the whole cycle begins anew. Their task completed, the adult cicadas only live for another four to six weeks before dying en masse, providing a bonanza of protein for local scavengers. So perfectly synchronized are these emergences that the population densities can reach up to 1.5 million individuals per acre, with the total population in the billions or even trillions. Then, after each die-off, periodical cicadas all but disappear from the surface environment until the next emergence, 13 
or 17 years later. Periodic cicada emergences have been observed for over 300 years, with the first documented emergence being recorded in 1715. Further emergences were recorded in 1732, 1749, and 1766, allowing naturalists to work out the life cycle of 17-year species and predict future emergences. In 1898, entomologist C. L. Marlett grouped periodical cicadas into 30 groups or broods based on geographical location and date of emergence. Each of these broods was assigned a Roman numeral, with numbers 1 through 17 being 17-year species and numbers 18 through 30 being 13-year species. However, many of these broods were purely hypothetical and have never been observed, while 2, 11, and 21 have since gone extinct. Today, only 15 distinct broods are known to exist, 12, 17, and 3, 13-year. Of these, brood 10, or the Great Eastern Brood, is the largest, its range extending across 15 eastern states, including Indiana, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, Tennessee, and Virginia, plus Washington, D.C. Composed of three 17-year species, emergencies of brood 10 have been recorded in 1902, 1919, 1936, 1970, 1987, 2004, and most recently, 2021. But why do periodical cicadas remain underground for so long, and why are their mass emergences so tightly synchronized? One reason has to do with an anti-predation strategy known as predator satiation. By emerging all at once, in overwhelming numbers, cicadas ensure that all their natural predators eat their fill before they can make a significant impact on the overall cicada population. A similar strategy is used by bamboo plants, which flower all at once all around the world every 120 years, producing so many seeds the vast majority are likely to survive and germinate. However, predator sedation does not explain why periodical cicadas have such long 13- and 17-year life cycles when most other cicadas live only 2-8 to eight years. This is where mathematics comes in, for 13 and 17 just so happen to be prime numbers. In his classic 1992 essay of bamboo cicadas and the economy of Adam Smith, evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould posits that the unique properties of prime numbers prevent the life cycles of cicadas from syncing up with those of their predators. Most cicada predators, like birds or small mammals, have short life cycles of just a few years, their populations fluctuating in response to availability of prey and other environmental factors. Over time, the population peak of predators gradually drifts to converge with that of their prey, a condition that can be devastating to the prey species. A prime number life cycle, however, minimizes these convergences. For example, if periodical cicadas had a life cycle of 10 years, their emergences would invariably synchronize with the population peak of any predator with a life cycle of 1, 2, 5, or 10 years. But because the number 13 is only divisible by 1 and 13, in reality these convergences can only occur at intervals corresponding to the product of the predator and praise life cycles. In this case, every 13, 26, 65, or 130 years. Thus, in the vast majority of cases, the cicadas emerge when the number of sexually mature predators is low, preventing the cicada population from being decimated and the predator population from taking full advantage of the nutritional bonanza. To test this theory, in 2001, biological mathematician Glenn Webb of Vanderbilt University in Tennessee created a computer simulation to model the population dynamics of cicadas with non-prime life cycles like 10, 12, and 15 years. In all cases, the cicadas' life cycles synced up with those of their predators, resulting in the cicada population being significantly reduced or even annihilated. The only populations which remained stable were those with life cycles of 13 and 17 years. As for why evolution selected 13 and 17 rather than lower primes like 5, 7, or 11, scientists posit that these longer intervals force predators, which prey mainly on cicadas, to go through multiple life cycles while waiting for the cicadas to emerge, significantly reducing their population. Others speculate the cicada life cycles originally evolved to avoid a predator with an equally long life cycle, but which has since gone extinct. The cicadas just haven't gotten the memo yet. But not all are convinced by this explanation. After all, the anti-predation theory does not explain why only a handful of cicada species evolved to have such long life cycles, nor why these species split into two distinct groups, one with a 13-year and one with a 17-year lifespan. One alternative theory is that cicadas evolved prime-numbered life cycles to protect themselves not from predators, but from each other. According to one version of this theory, by operating on two different prime-numbered cycles, geographically overlapping broods of cicadas can avoid emerging at the same time, reducing competition for scarce food resources. For two populations with 13 and 17 year life cycles, such a coincidence would only occur every 221 years. 
One of these rare events actually happened in 2015, when the 13-year Brood 23 and 17-year Brood 4 emerged simultaneously in the southwestern United States. However, according to Lou Sorkin, a cicada expert at the American Museum of Natural History, the evolution of cicada life cycles likely had less to do with food competition and more to do with genetics. Cicadas, Sorkin points out, evolved during the Pleistocene Epoch during the last ice age, when the climate was much cooler. Cicadas, which evolved to stay underground for longer periods, periods were less likely to emerge during an unusually cold spring and were thus more successful than cicadas with shorter life cycles. However, if cold adapted cicadas happened to breed with non-cold adapted individuals, then there was a risk the next generation could lose this genetic adaptation. Thus, according to Sorkin, cicadas evolved two different prime numbered life cycles so different populations would never overlap and genetic adaptations would not be lost through interbreeding. This explanation dovetails nicely with the older predator avoidance theory as interbreeding could potentially potentially result in a hybridized cicada generation with a non-prime numbered life cycle, allowing predators to sync up and devastate the cicada population. For all these mathematically ingenious defenses, there is one specialized predator cicadas have been unable to defeat, a parasitic fungus called Massospora. Massospora hijacks the cicada's nervous system, turning it into a zombie slave whose only purpose is to spread the fungus' as spores. Instead of singing for females, infected males flick their wings like females, enticing other males to try and mate with them. In the process, the amorous males become infected with Massospora spores. Meanwhile, the fungus slowly eats away at his host's body while pumping it full of an amphetamine called cathinone to keep it alive as long as possible. Being a fungus whose spores can lie dormant for years, Massospora is unaffected by the cicada's prime numbered life cycle. However, cicada numbers being what they are, the fungus has yet to make a significant dent in the population. A far more serious threat to the cicada might actually be climate change. As mentioned before, cicadas depend on ground temperature to time their emergences, and as the average global temperature rises, cicadas are starting to emerge earlier and earlier. For example, a large portion of Brood 10, scheduled to appear in 2021, actually emerged in 2017, while in May 2021, Brood 19 also emerged four years early. If this trend continues, News scientists predict all North American cicadas will eventually synchronize on a 13-year cycle, leading to extensive crossbreeding between broods. This may in turn result in the loss of prime-numbered life cycles, the synchronization of predator populations, and a massive drop in cicada numbers. For the moment, however, the cicada population appears healthy and strong, and the annoying but harmless red-eyed insects will likely coat trees and fences, disable presidential aircraft, and fill the summer air with their jet engine level wine. For many years to come. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.